In a previous video, we mentioned that we are going to do an update to this system. We're calling this now a version 1.0, as well as we're going to build a 1.5 and a 2.0 version. And if you want to watch that video, I'll provide a link here. We need to update this to make it more compatible with the other versions. And to do that, basically we're going to cut this pigtail off and put a connector like this on that side of it. That will make it more compatible with the other two versions. And so the first thing we want to do, of course, is to remove the front panel. And then I'm going to cut the wires off about here. That way it'll give me enough of a pigtail that I can wire in the new connector. And to do that, I'm just going to use my little Milwaukee cutoff wheel. That's all there is to it. And we'll have to put another end on this because we want to reuse this. And if you look at my old video when I built this, you can see uh, all the particulars. And if you want to watch that video, I'll provide a link here. And I removed the mounting hardware. And with a wrench, loosen this cable gland. There we go. So now that we have our wire separated, we can enlarge this hole here to fit a 7-pin connector. So how do you make the hole? I can't use a hole saw because I already cut a hole. I could use a nibbling tool. Each time you close it, it just takes a nibble of the metal out. You can see that it just cuts a little notch each time you depress it. And that'll work fine. The other option though, this is a one and a half inch conduit punch. And the one and a half inch conduit makes about a two inch hole, which is a perfect size for this. And the way this works, you thread this in. And what happens is that it will cut that one and a half inch size hole by putting a wrench on here. And now it's just a matter of tightening the punch. And you can see there we have a perfect hole. In this particular brand it's kind of nice because it cuts the pieces in two otherwise they can be jammed in here and be hard to get out. And I like to use my phone whenever I do projects because then that way it gives you a record of what you did. And so we pulled the harness out and looks like that. And then we just basically put the harness in here. Although I may need to shorten it just a little bit because otherwise it may stick over a little bit. So I think I'm gonna cut off maybe inch and a half on the ends. So now we do have our seven pin wiring done on this connector. Uh, you should realize that there are actually two different wiring standards. One is called the RV standard, which follows the RVIA and FPA 1192. And then the other standard is the SAE J2863 standard. Unfortunately, the color code is different between the two standards, but the pinouts at least are the same. So you may run into some difficulty if you buy the wrong connector that the color codes will not match up on the pins. So be aware of that. And I did a video on that titled all about seven pin wiring. And if you've not watched that, it's a lot of information you may not know about trailer wiring. Then after inserting the seven pin connector, I drilled four holes and fastened it. So now all we have to do is uh, rematch the color code to the original colors we had here. And I used uh, the photo that I took to make sure that the color codes are the same as what they originally were. And they are. And 
when I am done with this project, I will run a meter across it just to verify, double check everything is okay. So all we have to do now is just button it up again and the modification is complete. But we'll have to do the cable yet too. And to modify the seven pin cable, all we have to do is put another end on here like so. And I like this particular kind because it does have a gland and it will hold better than the other style. Now the only problem with this is this thing is called an RV trailer plug but if you look at the color code it's actually the SAE J2863 color code. If you go by the color code you're going to get messed up. And if you look at the left column you can see Pin 7 yellow, which is the auxiliary or backup. Pin 6 is red, left turn brake. Pin 5 is green, taillights. Pin 4 is black, battery charger. Pin 3 is brown, right turn brake. Pin 2 blue is brakes. Pin 1 white is ground. Again, this is the RVIA NFPA 1192, known as the RV color code. And then we have the 7 pin SAE color code in seven violet reverse lights, pin six yellow left turn brake, pin five brown tail lights, pin four black or red battery charger, pin three green right turn brake, pin two blue brakes, pin one white ground. Now you can see that the color codes are different but if you look at the functions each pin has the same function. You just need to understand the differences here. And again I go into greater depth in my all about trailer wiring video. And now we have the connector properly terminated. And by the way, if you have an RV cable, a 10 gauge white and black wire, which is ground and battery, a 12 gauge blue wire, which is brake, and then 14 gauge for the other functions. If you buy a cheap cable, either RV or SAE, then these will probably all be 14 gauge. And you really don't want that. You want the better stuff that has 10, 12, 14 gauge. All right, so we're going to now assemble this which is pretty simple pretty straightforward well grub screw goes in here we want to put the strain relief in there we go you connect this end to the rv here and if you want to connect this to the truck you just plug it in here and then this end goes into the truck and these are actually both identical, these connectors, so either connector could go into either side. In other words, you know, we could put this one in here and plug that in the truck, same thing. That concludes the modification update to uh, version 1.0, and in the upcoming videos I'll do version 1.5 and version 2.0. Thanks for watching.